there are a number of tools that we have for working with vectors. So one of the things that we can do with vectors is we can add them. And adding vectors looks a little different than um, adding scalars. Okay, so the way that we add vectors is um, what I like to think of as pirate map rules. So um, if you imagine an old-timey pirate map where it says, you know, go 25 paces north and then 15 paces east and then go 26 paces southwest or something like that, um, what you imagine doing if you drew that out in a map is it says to go some direction and then from wherever you end up, you go some other direction and then maybe it takes you in another direction and you just kind of like zoom around in all these different directions and follow some path, but you end up at some location relative to where you started. And what we could have done instead, if you weren't trying to you know, make your pirate map confusing, is you could have just gone from the very beginning directly to the end, but then it isn't a very good pirate map. Okay, so the rule that we use when we're adding vectors together in this way is we add them head to tail. So we just take each of the vectors, we move the vectors so that the tail of one is on the head of the other one. Okay, and when we write out the um, addition of vectors, we just take a vector, which remember we show um, by putting an arrow over the top, and then we just use a regular plus and then the other vector and then we can say that that adds to some additional vector. Okay, so um, we use sort of normal algebraic notation for this, even though it looks a little weird to do it this way. Um, another thing that we can do when we're working with vectors is we can take some vector like this, and we can create a set of vectors that adds to this. And a special set that we can use um, is called the components. So I can take a vector that is just horizontal and another one that is just vertical, and those two vectors added head to tail add up to the original vector. Okay, so let's call this vector r. Um, this one is then rx vector, and this one is ry vector, if we have, for instance, an xy coordinate system um, sort of in the usual orientation. Okay, so um, splitting it up this way is useful a lot, and you'll get a lot of practice doing this this quarter. So we call this um, splitting the vector into components. Okay, and we often talk about the x component of a vector or the y component of a vector, um, and that's what we're talking about when we do it this way. Okay, um, there are a few different ways to write out a vector. So sometimes we'll say something like, um, you know, 45 meters, um, 23 degrees north of west. And what that means is we essentially have some coordinate system where we have like east, north, west. Um, and the north of west is going to be some angle like this, where this is our 23 degree angle, and it's like this. So 45 degrees in a certain direction. Or we could also talk about it as like some amount um, north and some amount west. So we could talk about the individual coordinates, the x and y coordinates, for instance. So for instance, maybe x equals three meters, um, y equals negative two meters. That would be a way to represent a position vector. Um, one way to encode that information is we could say, well, maybe my r vector has an x coordinate of three. So that's going to be three meters. Um, and we often use uh, a notation like x hat to indicate that that's the part in the x direction, and then minus two meters y hat in the y hat direction. Uh, another uh, notation for this, which is really common, although um, I'm not as excited about it, it is the one that the textbook uses from time to time. Um, instead of x, y, and then z hat, well, we can use our i, j, and k, and they mean the exact same thing. You just have to remember that i corresponds to x, um, and y corresponds to j, and if you had some, um, like to be consistent, I'll just have this be zero um, k hat, but I like x hat, y hat, z hat. The book uses i hat, j hat, k hat. There's no difference, they're the same thing. Um, this is a really nice notation to use for some things because let's say I wanted to add two vectors together. So let's say I wanted to do a vector plus b vector. Well, I can write out each of those in components. So I can do the x component, which I'll call a sub x, i hat, plus a sub y, j hat. And we'll ignore um, k components for now. We'll just assume that these are two dimensional vectors. Um, and then I want to add b. Well, b has an x component, so bx, i hat, plus by j hat. And then what I can do is I can just um, lump together the i components. So I could do ax plus bx times i hat plus ay plus by times j hat. Okay, so the thing that's really nice about doing this is if you split up your vector into x and y components, you can actually just focus on the x components first and ignore everything else. And then you can focus on the y components and ignore everything else. And then at the end, put your vectors back together. So we'll see a lot of examples of this in the class, but this is a thing that uh, makes vectors really, really useful for understanding what's going on. We can treat x, y, and z separately. Okay, so that's a really useful tool. Um, a notation that we often use um, is if I want to know the magnitude of some vector r, then I can write that magnitude as absolute value of r vector, or 
we'll often just write r with no um, arrow over it and that also represents a magnitude so typically you want to use the absolute value bars if you think there's a chance that people will be confused what you're talking about um, but you know just using the variable with no arrow is pretty common in physics and that can save you a little bit of writing if you're you know confident that you're doing it correctly um, so a thing that we often want to do is, con is to convert between the um, XYZ component form of a vector and the magnitude and direction form. And so to understand how to do that, we just think of a right triangle. Okay, so if you know the um, hypotenuse and you want to know the um, two legs for the triangle, the other piece of information is the angle, well, we can go back and forth between those. Okay, so um, for instance, the sine of the angle sine theta is opposite over hypotenuse, so that's ry over r. So if you know the angle and the magnitude, then you can figure out the x and y components by using sine and cosine. Or if you know the x and y components, then the magnitude r is just going to be the square root of rx squared plus ry squared. I mean, if it's three-dimensional, then plus rz squared as well. Um, so another um, tool that we have for working with vectors is that we can scale vectors, which just means multiplying them by a scalar. So for instance, let's say that I have a vector r like this, I could do 3r, which is just going to be in the same direction, but three times longer. Or I could do negative 2r, which is the opposite direction and twice as long, like this. Um, so negatives flip the direction, um, and a number will just scale it by that amount. So numbers bigger than one make it longer, numbers smaller than one will make it shorter. Um, by combining scaling and addition, we can do subtraction. So subtraction of vectors actually makes sense. So a minus b is a vector plus negative b vector. So I take b vector, flip it, and add a vector to that. So subtraction actually makes perfect sense. Division does not make sense. We can never divide vectors. So dividing vectors makes no sense. That's good news. You'll never have to worry about dividing any vectors. Um, interestingly, multiplying vectors um, is just a little complicated. So multiplying vectors is something we'll do later in the class, but there's actually more than one way to do that. So multiplying of two vectors together doesn't just mean one thing. We'll talk about having a couple of different kinds of vector products, um, but you don't have to worry about that for a month or so.